All right, folks, Rich Van Tassel back with you, finishing up our game picks for week 13 of the NFL season. And, of course, we are recording audio for Get Live Radio. The Cleveland Browns, 0-11, 0-5 on the road, travel to Los Angeles to play the Chargers, who are all of a sudden 5-6, and 2-3 and three at home, and right in the thick of things in both the division and the wild card. Injuries for the visiting Browns, Sammy Coates, wide receiver, is out. For the Chargers, Mike Williams, wide receiver, out. The rest are questionable. Nick Novak, kicker. Corey Ligu, defensive tackle. Casey Hayward, cornerback. Everything is starting to come together for the Chargers. Phillip Rivers is playing sharp right now. Melvin Gordon is starting to run the ball. They're finding Keenan Allen downfield, who's having a very good season. They, of course, hammered the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. Let's see if they can keep that momentum. They've had some time off. They have a really bad Browns team coming into town, so you look for that letdown a little bit, but the Chargers are just cruising too much, and you can't give the Browns a game. The Browns probably won't go 0-16, but I won't pick them to win. I expect the Chargers to come away with the victory 24-13 over the Cleveland Browns. The New York Giants, 2-9, 1-5 on the road, travel to Oakland to play the Raiders, who are 5-6, and 3-3 and at home. Of course, all the news about Eli Manning being benched in favor of Geno Smith. Injuries for the visiting Giants. Janoris Jenkins is an injury reserve out. Jonathan Casillas, a linebacker, is out. Justin Pugh, guard, doubtful. Damon Harrison, defensive tackle, and Eli Apple, cornerback, are questionable. For the Raiders, Amari Cooper, wide receiver, is out. The rest are questionable. Cordell Patterson, wide receiver. David Amerson, cornerback. Gabe Jackson, guard. Corey James, linebacker. Oakland, of course, like the Los Angeles Chargers in the wild card race and, of course, in the division race with the way Kansas City has come back to the rest of the pack. They are without Amari Cooper this week. That offense has had their injuries all season. They've had their inconsistency all season. They, of course, lost Latavius Murray in the offseason. I think that's been a part of it. At the running back position, Marshawn Lynch hasn't clicked. And now you don't have Amari Cooper in as Derek Carr was coming back. So let's see how much that's going to affect this team in this game, trying to get their offense back together and on track because certainly they're still in it. For as wild as the season has been for the Oakland Raiders, they're still there. For the Giants, look, it's tough to pick them in this case. Benching Eli Manning, a, ro- a lot of dissension amongst the ranks there. Geno Smith is not really the quality quarterback. That's a different topic for a different day. However, if they went to Davis Webb, that would be one thing, but you're going to Geno Smith. Doesn't seem to make much sense to me. I don't see any reason that the New York Giants should be able to compete in this game. But then again, you just never know. I didn't think that they would have competed in the Bronco game and they got the victory. But I'm not going to pick them to win in this one. I like the Oakland Raiders 28-10 to over the New York Giants. And it could be a very difficult loss for the Giants in this one. The Carolina Panthers, 8-3, 5-1 and and on the road. Travel to New Orleans to play the Saints, who are 8-3, and 4-1 and one at home. Both of these teams are atop the NFC South, and then you have the Atlanta Falcons at a game back at 7-4. and four. Injuries for the visiting Panthers. John Theus, offensive tackle, is out. The rest are questionable. Greg Olson, tight end. Thomas Davis, linebacker. Shaq Thompson, linebacker. And Ryan Khalil, center. For the New Orleans Saints, Kobe Fleener, tight end. Marcus Williams, safety, are out. The rest are questionable. Marshawn Lattimore, cornerback. P.J. Williams, cornerback. And Terran Armstead, offensive tackle. Armstead has had his injury problems all season long. Of course, a big game in the division race between these two teams. I'm hearing reports that Cam Newton is also having some injury problems. I don't know exactly what it is. If... It's just, you know, the team playing possum or whatever, but certainly that has been something that has been discussed this week, so we'll keep an eye on that. You have the injury question marks in the secondary for the New Orleans Saints, an improved secondary and an all-around improved defense with their two corners in Marshawn Lattimore and P.J. Williams, young guys who they're really relying on to make some noise this season. And, of course, Marcus Williams, the safety is already out. So we'll have to keep an eye on whether or not the Panthers, as we've discussed with their offense, they've really gone away from what they've tried to accomplish at the beginning of the year, which is the short, quick passing game with Cam Newton and those things, getting the ball out of his hands fast. Let's see if they try to go downfield. Let's see if they work Greg Olson. A lot of things to keep an eye on. The biggest thing as well, which is what I thought was going to be the biggest key to the success for the Carolina Panthers this year was the improved play of Bradbury and Worley. The corners, they played very well against the Jets last week. Let's see if they can keep that up. They'll certainly need to 
to limit Drew Brees, who's having a very good season. Cam Newton high in his interceptions, 14 touchdowns to 11 interceptions for Cam Newton. Let's see if he limits the turnovers. I like the Saints at home, however, in a relatively high-scoring game, 31-24 to over the Carolina Panthers. The Los Angeles Rams, 8-3, 4-1 on the road, travel to Arizona to play the Cardinals, who are 5-6, and 3-2 and at home. Arizona in that mess of teams that are 5-6 and six in the NFC, where you really have to win out and hope, and that probably wouldn't even be enough at this point. Injuries for the visiting Rams. Connor Barwin, linebacker, Robert Woods, wide receiver, are out. Malcolm Brown, running back, Lance Dunbar, running back, questionable. For the Cardinals, Deion Buchanan, linebacker, Rudy Ford, safety, out. Adrian Peterson, running back, Troy Nicholas, tight end, and Josh Morrow, defensive tackle, are questionable. Arizona was able to get the win against the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. Blaine Gabbert played pretty well in that game. They got a couple breaks. They had the game won, then they gave it away, then they were able to get it back at the end. Let's see what happens moving forward with Blaine Gabbert. How much consistency can he put forth against what has been a good Los Angeles Rams defense under Wade Phillips. We can talk all day long about how improved the offense has been for the Rams, and they have been. Certainly, you have Jared Goff, 18 touchdowns to 5 interceptions. Todd Gurley playing very well. He's had eight touchdowns this year, over four yards per carry, really coming into what we thought he'd be when he was drafted. But the defense under Wade Phillips is really getting the job done. I see them causing problems for Blaine Gabbert, and I don't see the Arizona Cardinals being able to come away with the victory, and their season essentially ends, and they are all but eliminated mathematically after the loss in this one. The Rams getting the victory 24 to 17 over the Arizona Cardinals. And then the Sunday night game, the Philadelphia Eagles 10 and 1, 4 and 1 on the road, travel to Seattle to play the Seahawks who are 7 and 4, 3 and 2 at home. Injuries for the visiting Eagles, one listed, Joel Walker, linebacker is questionable for the Seattle Seahawks. Josh Forsett, linebacker is out. Deion Jordan defensive end, Nazir Jones defensive tackle doubtful. Dwayne Brown offensive tackle, DJ Alexander linebacker questionable. This is an interesting game to pick. On paper, Philadelphia is cruising. Carson Wentz, 28 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Their offense is clicking. Alshon Jeffrey playing very well. Zach Ertz, the tight end. All those weapons they brought in. Torrey Smith for Carson Wentz have been playing well. Philadelphia, however, all but has the division wrapped up. It happened basically... A week or so ago, right around Thanksgiving, when the Cowboys were hammered on Thanksgiving, if there was any chance, it certainly ended there that a team would dethrone the Eagles for the division. Now you're traveling all the way to Seattle for a Sunday night game. That should put a little pep in their step, being on prime time, but you got to wonder just if this team might have gotten a little too big for its britches. I'd like to keep an eye on that. Of course, for the Seattle Seahawks, it's going to be the Russell Wilson show. 23 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. He's their top rusher with over 400 yards. He does everything for them offensively. Can this secondary, which has lost some guys like Richard Sherman, be able to slow down the Philadelphia offense? I think maybe somewhat just because there's a lot of professionals back there. But too much is going to be put on Russell Wilson. Carson Wentz is going to have his way. Philadelphia will come away with a 28-17 victory. Pending, they don't get too big for their britches, as we just said before. And of course, for all of you listening on Get Live Radio, you can check out my channel, the Rich Van Tassel channel, where we have the recaps of these games tomorrow, Monday night, and Thursday night previews, and any other Flash news alerts. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next time.